Hi, I'm Raccoon. The anime I'm sharing with you today is Gleipnir. What happens to the protagonist is just too bizarre. On this day, he turns into a giant mascot, and a girl in a swimsuit is slowly entering his body from his back. His body feels an electric shock with a trace of wonderful feelings arising. Why does the boy become a mascot and gets merged with the swimsuit girl? Everything starts from an event not long ago. The boy is named Shuichi, a high school student with excellent academic performance. One day he noticed a strange change in his body. He recovers from myopia, and gains an acute sense of smell. This night, he smells a fire several kilometers away. He goes over to check it out of curiosity, but at the scene he notices the smell of humans. Just then, he uncontrollably transforms into a giant mascot. Seeing a girl lying in the fire, Shuichi decides to save the girl out of kindness. He breaks through the wall with great power and carries the girl to a safe place. At this moment, the girl's revealing clothes arouses Shuichi's evil thoughts. He slowly takes off the girl's panties. But at the critical moment, sanity overcomes evil thoughts. Shuichi changes back to human form and hurriedly flees the scene. When Shuichi goes home, he finds his cell phone missing, probably leaving it at the scene of the fire last night. The girl he saved last night comes to find Shuichi in his school when he is still worried about exposing his secret. She said, it's real, and it's just right next to me, can you tell me about the monsters? The girl asks Shuichi have a talk at the roof. Shuichi is unwilling to admit his identity as a monster and is pushed down the roof by the girl. Looking at Shuichi, who has to protect himself by transforming into a monster, the girl succeeds in her trick. She threatens Shuichi to reveal the secret about the monster or she will expose Shuichi's identity. In fact, Shuichi does not know why he can transform into a mascot. Seeing that Shuichi doesn't seem to be lying, the girl does not disconcert him anymore. After school, the girl tells Shuichi that her name is Kureya. She takes out a gold coin, saying it is related to the monster. But Shuichi also sees this gold coin for the first time. After that, Kureya takes Shuichi back to her house. Kureya has been investigating monsters like Shuichi, but no one has believed her. Now she finally meets Shuichi, intending to find out the secret of transforming into a monster with Shuichi. Suddenly, a girl appears in the balcony, who is coming for the gold coin in Kureya's hand. Luckily, Shuichi transforms into a mascot and subdues the girl. Unexpectedly, this girl also transforms into a monster and knocks Shuichi down. Let's have a short look at the girl's experience. After finding a gold coin by the river, she gave it to a mysterious man in exchange for the power to transform into a monster next to a vending machine at school. It seems that if she collects more gold coins, she can gain more power. Today, after school, she saw Kureya take out the gold coin for which she followed her here. Now, the girl has beaten Shuichi. At the critical moment, Kureya makes her temporarily lose her fighting ability with the pepper spray. However, Shuichi dare not hit her out of cowardice, just escaping from the house with Kureya. Kureya tells Shuichi that judging by the girl's actions, it may be not her first time to take actions, and she guesses that the gold coin is likely to be the currency in exchange for power, so the girl will kill anyone for the gold coin. Kureya finds a huge zipper on Shuichi's back, and then she tries pulling the zipper to get inside. In an instant, Shuichi and Kureya fuse as one and can feel each other's emotions. Meanwhile, the girl also arrives. Kureya finds she can also manipulate the body of the mascot. After a short period of adaptation, Kureya shows her strong power. Compared with Shuichi, Kureya is more decisive. Eventually, Kureya kills the girl. Her ruthlessness horrifies Shuichi. When Shuichi returns to school, he instinctively stays away from Kureya. But Kureya takes Shuichi to an isolated warehouse. Shuichi finally can't hold back his emotions. He wonders why he can transform into a monster and fears that he will die at any moment after encountering a girl who is also a monster. Kureya tells Shuichi that he will suffer more in his future, but she can promise if Shuichi dies one day, she will also die with him. Shuichi blurts out, what if I don't want to live now? Just then, Kureya goes to a high place and leaps down, proving her vow with her actions. Shuichi transforms into a mascot and saves Kureya. In his most difficult time, there is a girl willing to live and die with him, causing Shuichi to have a different attitude towards Kureya. Kureya confesses everything to Shuichi, saying that she has actually been looking for her sister, Arena, who is also a monster just like Shuichi, but she disappeared after killing her parents. Kureya takes Shuichi back home and goes into Shuichi's body once again. They find they can control this body together and feel each other's emotions. Afterwards, Kureya tells more of the story. Six months ago, Kureya returned home only to see her parents murdered. At the scene, she found a horrible black shadow resembling her sister, and it handed a gold coin to Kureya. She hates her sister killing her parents, and now what she wants to do is to find her sister. Kureya knows Shuichi has an amazing sense of smell, so she takes out the clothes her sister wore before and asks Shuichi to smell them, trying to track down her sister by this means. In exchange, Kureya has to help Shuichi find the reason why he transforms into a monster. Shuichi is terrified after smelling the clothes, because he learns that her sister seems to have killed countless humans, which makes Kureya more convinced that her sister is the murderer. 
and she insists on taking revenge on her sister. Afterwards, they start their journey to find Kuria's sister. They purchase the necessary supplies and wander around the city. Unexpectedly, Shuichi really smells the scent of Arena. Kuria controls the body to hide in the shadows, waiting for the opportunity to shoot her sister. Shuichi reads Kuria's minds that she still has affection for her sister, and he stops her because he doesn't want Kuria to feel regretful. Arena senses the danger and instantly transforms into a terrifying black shadow, enveloping Shuichi. But when seeing Shuichi's face, Arena has tears in her eyes and looks a little shy. She guesses that Shuichi comes to kill her, and asks him to talk in a different place. Her words even dismay Shuichi more. She says apologetically, I would like to get killed by you, because she is the one who caused Shuichi to become a monster. It shocks Kuria. She can no longer hold back and makes a sound. Arena finds there is another woman hiding in Shuichi's body, instantly transforming into a horrible black shadow in a rage. She shouts that position belongs to her, then directly pulling off Shuichi's head. Kuria shoots at Arena out of anger, only to cause no damage at all. Instead, she is subdued by Arena. When Kuria asks Arena why she killed her parents, Arena replies that their parents are not good people. Their father, a counselor, is secretly doing bad things everywhere, and their mother is cheating on their father with a younger man as well. Didn't Kuria also say that one day she would kill her parents? Arena just helps Kuria achieve her goal in advance. At first, Arena needs Kuria's protection, but now Arena can protect Kuria. Then, Arena leaves another gold coin to Kuria, reminding her to take it to the school hotel. At this moment, Arena receives a phone call and leaves in a hurry. Thinking that Shuichi is dead, Kuria is about to keep her words to live and die together. At this moment, the mascot's head makes a sound aside. It turns out that Shuichi is still alive. Kuria hugs Shuichi and cries. They take the gold coin to the school hotel. Here they meet a mysterious man, who tells them that it was lucky that Shuichi didn't turn back to human form when his head was pulled off, or he would really die. Then, he takes the gold coin from Kuria's hand and cures Shuichi of his broken body. The mysterious man claims himself to be an Uchujin. In order to convince them of his identity, the mysterious man eats a hair from Kuria's body, and then he gets the appearance of Kuria. The mysterious man says that on his way back to his home planet, his spacecraft accidentally crashed into Earth. Since it was not easy to move their bodies during the long journey, the Ushujins compressed themselves into gold coins. After the spacecraft crashed, the gold coins were scattered all over the Earth. It was inconvenient for him to find his partners alone, so he used humans on Earth to find the gold coins. As a reward, he can give them great power. The one who can collect 100 gold coins will gain amazing power. According to his words, Shuichi should also have exchanged gold coins for the ability to transform into a monster. But Shuichi has no recollection of it. After saying this, the Uchujin is unwilling to reveal more information. On their way home, Shuichi knows that Kuria still has a gold coin. He is worried that Kuria will also use it to transform into a monster. But Kuria's words warm Shuichi's heart that she promises not to use the gold coin because she has Shuichi now. When Shuichi returns home, he thinks seriously about what the mysterious man said, feeling that they cannot completely trust the mysterious man's words. Finally they decide to investigate the truth on their own, and also look for traces of Arena. They go to the mountain where the Uchujin said the spaceship crashed. Kuria guesses normal human will never come to this remote mountain, and that those who will come here must be monsters who collect gold coins. And they also need more gold coins to exchange information to find out the truth. Here they encounter the monster with horns, whose hands are blades. It is named Tadanori, a madman who upholds force. He is here not to collect gold coins, but to find a suitable opponent for fighting. Although they are still no match for Tatanori after they combine with each other, Kuria finally defeats Tatanori with her intelligence. Kuria's fighting talent completely conquers Tatanori, and she invites this man to help her collect gold coins. Just then, a big-headed monster taking photos secretly suddenly appears. The monster threatens to expose their true identities in the city if they do not follow his orders. Just then, Tatanori slashes at him. Kuria sees a group of people from the monster's cell phone and comes up with a new idea. Kuria guesses that her sister, Arena, must have accomplices as well and will also go into the mountain to collect gold coins. As she and Shuichi are still too weak, Kuria finds the people in the phone and threatens to reveal their identity. Finally, she manages to join their group. The leader of these people is a girl named Sayaka. In order to gain their trust, Kuria confesses her purpose is to take revenge on her sister, Arena. Unexpectedly, Sayaka also knows Arena. She promises to do her best to find Arena. But Sayaka asks Kuria to keep it as a secret. In fact, their purpose of going into the mountain is to stop those monsters from collecting 100 gold coins and getting superpower from the Ushujins, or else the human world will be in chaos. Because she was betrayed by her best friend, Sayaka chose the ability of making others keep their secrets. Sayaka holds a curse ritual for Kuria. If she tells the group's secret to others, she will be dead. During the ritual, a female named Sahiro sets her eyes on Shuichi in his mascot form. 
This girl is naturally fond of furry animals and her ability is to communicate with them. She accidentally lost her wallet while going up the mountain, which contains the information of her identity, and it will be in danger of exposing her identity if it is picked up by another monster. Shuichi decides to look for the wallet with her out of kindness. To facilitate the action, Sahiro goes into Shuichi's body without clothes. Coincidentally, Sahiro's wallet is picked up by Subaru, Arena's companion. Subaru is also a ruthless person. When encountering Shuichi, who comes to find the wallet, he attacks Shuichi without saying anything. Those who can team up with Arena are all powerful monsters. Plus it is Sahiro, the one who is not aggressive, now in Shuichi's body, so Shuichi can't resist Subaru's attacks at all. After a few rounds, Shuichi's body is broken. Unexpectedly, after the body of Shuichi's mascot is broken, he actually gets a hidden special skill. He and Sahiro merge together, transforming into a new form and gaining much stronger power. Now he can resist Subaru's attacks and even fight back. When the battle is about to decide on a winner, Arena arrives to stop them. Sahiro sees Arena's face through Shuichi's body, and then feels shocked. In the process of merging just now, she read the memories of Arena in Shuichi's mind. It turns out that Shuichi and Arena have known each other for a long time. Sahiro stops Shuichi, who still intends to launch an attack, and Arena leaves here with Subaru. As a memory emerges in Arena's mind, we discover that it was Arena who took the gold coins and asked the Uchujin to turn Shuichi into a mascot monster. At this moment, Kureya finally finds Shuichi, who crumples up on the floor. For some reason, Shuichi only remembers that his body was broken after the battle with Arena's companion, and he forgets everything happened afterwards. But Sahiro conceals it though she remembers. Everyone thinks other forces joined the battle later, so Shuichi is safe and sound. After that, Sayaka also holds a curse ritual for Shuichi to keep the secret. Kureya goes to find Sahiro alone. She knows Sahiro is lying, but Sahiro still tries to conceal it. In order to show her position, Kureya says that only she can make Shuichi play superb fighting power. Kureya just whispers, you and Shuichi are really not the same type, and you can never combine with Shuichi as one. It seems that since having merged with Shuichi, Sahiro knows more secrets about Shuichi's body. At night, when returning to the city, Sahiro calls Arena. It turns out that after the merging not long ago, Sahiro and Shuichi's bodies and minds are fused together, including Arena's phone number. In Shuichi's memory, a black shadow appears frequently. She can know it is exactly Arena from a third-person perspective, and Arena seems not a bad person in Shuichi's memory but a unique presence. So Sahiro asks Arena to stop others from collecting the 100 gold coins and stop the world's disaster with her. Arena can't help having moist eyes when she hears Sahiro talking about herself in Shuichi's memory. However, she reminds Sahiro that 100 gold coins are not that hard to collect, and someone may have already collected them. She has her own purpose, so she cannot be Sahiro's companion. Next day, after discussing, several people of Kureya's team find it will be particularly difficult to search for gold coins aimlessly in the mountain, so they decide to head to the location where the spaceship crashed. It may be easier to collect gold coins there. On their way into the mountain, they notice the monster's trace. Few people in their group possess the ability to fight, so they decide to detour, which is exactly the monster's trick. They walk on a much flatter road, giving the monsters a better view to observe them. Soon, there is a centipede-like monster catching up with them. It grabs Sayaka, asking them all to join their monster team. Then he throws out a head and threatens to kill everyone if they don't join the team. It angers one of the members, Yoda. What he hates most is the evil one oppressing the weak. He and Shuichi are the only madmen in this team who have the ability to fight. This centipede monster is quickly defeated by Yoda in a rage. Shortly after, the leader of the monster team, Madoka, pulls off one of his hard teeth to heal the centipede monster. With the help of the monster team, Madoka finds Kureya's team. He transforms into a terrifying giant ape and beats Kureya's team so hard that they can't strike back. Originally, they still try their best to fight, but soon they lose the courage to resist when they see many monsters coming around. Madoka unhurriedly says their aim is to collect gold coins together and then give them all to Madoka so that Madoka can gain the most powerful power and help them fulfill their wishes. Madoka asks Kureya's team to join them, but her team hurt the members of the monster team just now, so now they have to sacrifice one of their members, which is their initiation ritual. Madoka deliberately leaves them some time to think. At the critical moment, Kureya takes out the oleander seeds, asking Isao, who has the ability to make plants grow fast, to germinate these seeds quickly to grow into a profusion of flowers. After that, she's gonna do something particularly crazy. Shuichi has already noticed what she thinks. He hugs Kureya tightly, expressing his willingness to take on everything that happens next with Kureya. Afterwards, they burn all the oleanders, which is a peculiar plant that it will produce a strong poison when it is burning, by which Kureya attacks the monster team. Ikuchi, who is unaware of the plan, wants to join the monster team, so he tells their plan, who is strangled to death by Sayaka's curse. When chasing after them, the leader of the monster team, Madoka, finds his companions incapacitated. Finally, 
the monster team are killed and injured. Madoka is unwilling to abandon his injured companions, so he dies as well. This incident comes as a terrible blow to the Kurea's team. They decide to disband the team for a time being and go down the mountain by another route. Shuichi, who returns to campus, finds his best friend missing. Soon after, his best friend's body floats down from the river in the mountain with his body burnt. Shuichi realizes that his best friend is also a member of the monster team, and that some of the people around him have got involved in the accident. He furiously finds the Uchujin, denouncing his violence and asking him to stop this disaster. But the Uchujin just tells Shuichi this game has already been out of control. If Shuichi wants to stop it, he can promise not to do anything to interfere him. Shuichi leaves and then comes to a remote place. He finds someone has been following him, who is exactly the only survivor of the monster team, and is the most loyal admirer of the leader. He comes to take revenge on Shuichi, but he is no match for Shuichi at all. At this moment, Shuichi receives a call from Kureya, who has something to discuss with Shuichi. Kureya hears there seems to be someone around Shuichi, and she is worried about Shuichi's safety. Unexpectedly, Shuichi just coolly replies, I'm fine. He then shoots and kills the enemy in front of him. Shuichi's personality has great change under the influence of the battles in Kureya. Now let's see Uchujin's part. He starts to think of the first human he encountered when he came to the earth. The girl's name is Honoka. After hearing about the Uchujin's request to collect gold coins to find his companions, she said that humans on earth could help collect gold coins. And the Uchujin, in turn, could help those who collect gold coins fulfill their wishes with his own ability. Honoka also took out a photo of her companions, saying that she could invite them to help collect gold coins together. Unexpectedly, Shuichi and Arena are in the photo. They were in the same cram school before. Among them, Naoto and Aiko, was a couple. On this day, when they were having a party, Kaido noticed Honoka didn't come and learned the rumor that Honoka's father had been arrested for killing someone. The sudden disappearance of Honoka made Kaido, who had a crush on her, so sad. Aiko, however, persuaded Kaido to forget about Honoka. After that, Kaido still looked for Honoka everywhere, but he couldn't find her. He then recalled on the day of the party. Aiko touched her hair in the same way as Honoka, and he had also heard Naoto say that Aiko seemed to change a lot lately. So Kaido followed Aiko to find out if she knew about Honoka, but found the Uchujin instead, who was collecting the gold coins. Kaido took his companions to the Uchujin and learned that Honoka used gold coins in exchange for becoming Aiko. She wanted to erase her identity and go on with her life as another person. Kaido guessed that Honoka had been secretly in love with Aiko's boyfriend, Naoto, so she killed Aiko and took her identity. It was so hard for Kaido to accept it and he took it upon himself to avenge Aiko's death by secretly killing Honoka, who was living under Aiko's identity. But an event happened next completely broke Kaido down. Naoto found the note written by Aiko to Honoka, making Kaido realize that Aiko ended her life by herself and was not killed by Honoka. Let's see Honoka's memories. It turns out that Aiko was a good and righteous student who often stopped bad students from bullying other students. However, many bad students took revenge on her. Finally, she was overwhelmed and ended her life. At that time, no one knew about Aiko's death except Honoka. In Honoka's opinion, Aiko was a popular girl, but she was like an invisible person. So she took out the gold coin and wished to the Uchujin that she could live her life under Aiko's identity, by which Aiko's friends and family wouldn't feel sad about Aiko's death. After that, Kaido took a gold coin and found the Uchujin to make a wish out of his self-blaming. Since then, a girl in white often appeared in the town, and she would ask people passing by who she was. Anyone who couldn't answer would be killed. Naoto, Shuichi and Arena sense that this matter might be related to Kaido. If Kaido really did something wrong, they would stop him by using gold coins to exchange power with the Uchujin. Uchujin's memory ends here, and let's see Kureya's part. When she is looking for the clue of Shuichi transforming into a monster, she finds Shuichi went to a cram school at a young age. In the cram school, Kureya notices a mascot, which looks exactly the same as Shuichi after he transforms. She hurriedly calls Shuichi to meet her, but Shuichi is dealing with the member of the monster team who keeps following him. Kuria temporarily conceals the matter and finds an excuse to go to Shuichi's home, hoping to find more clues, only to find that Shuichi's house is messy, as if no one has lived there for a long time. But Shuichi does not even notice it. Kuria hurriedly asks Shuichi when was the last time he saw his parents. Soon, Kuria deduces from the clues that it was Arena who had killed Shuichi's parents and then changed Shuichi's memory with her ability. Just then, Shuichi sees the scene of Arena hugging him. He almost loses control and nearly hurts Kuria. At this time, the curses on their necks made by Sayaka suddenly disappear, and then the phone rings. It turns out that Sayaka decides not to get involved in any activity about monsters after discussing with others. Instead, they intend to live an ordinary life and give the gold coins to Kureya and Shuichi, who plan to continue tracing it. They agree to meet each other tomorrow afternoon. But in fact, their real purpose is to lure Kureya and Shuichi away, handing all gold coins to Arena, which is proposed by Sahiro. 
Arena and Naoto are having a secret talk on the plan in the mountain. From their conversation, we can know in order to protect Shuichi, Arena erased his memories. It seems that Kaido wished something horrible. If Shuichi regains his memories, he will be in great danger. And the reason why Arena and Naoto went to the mountain is to deal with Kaido, who has already transformed into a monster. When it is time for the deal, Kureya and Shuichi sense something wrong. Kureya cleverly cracks their plan, and then she and Shuichi successfully catches Arena, who is making deal with Sahiro. According to the fragment that flashed through his mind earlier, Shuichi knows that his transforming into a monster and losing his memory may be related to Arena. Arena tries to deny it, but Kuria takes out the same mascot as Shuichi. Shuichi's memories are instantly flooded into his mind, and he gradually remembers what happened before. Arena tries to stop it, but it is too late. The creepy girl in white suddenly appears in front of Shuichi and asks him who she is. Shuichi tries to answer the name of Honoka based on his memory in his mind, but is stopped by Arena. If he really answers it, Shuichi will be completely wiped out from this world. But if he answers incorrectly or doesn't answer it, he will also be attacked by the girl in white. Just when Shuichi can't resist it, Arena seals Shuichi's memories with her ability again, and then the girl in white also leaves. Arena vomits blood because she expends too much power in sealing others' memories. Shuichi finally realizes Arena is protecting him. He promises to Arena that he will definitely collect 100 gold coins and make a wish to completely end this disaster. At the end of the story, Kureya and Shuichi go on their journey to collect gold coins. What exactly does Kaido wish for? What's the feud between him and Shuichi? Let's keep these questions for next season. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As I upload the latest anime recaps, I'll be recapping some classic anime I really like in between. If you have any classic anime that you want me to recap, just comment below. Bye.